Detective, starring the world's greatest magician, Blackstone. He tells you the inside story of The Emerald in the Fishbowl. And right after the story, Blackstone will explain tricks that you yourself can perform, revealing the guarded secrets of the world's greatest magician. <laughs> Stand by for Blackstone, the magic detective. Now to Blackstone's magic studio. It's really a very remarkable place. Everything is so curious and unusual. Do you include me in that description? Why, hello, Rhoda. Hello. Well, I wouldn't say that you're curious, but you're certainly unusual. Because of the way I appear from Blackstone's cabinet? Well, that's one reason. Then that big fishbowl is unusual, too, because Blackstone produces it out of thin air in every show. Certainly is a large one. How in the world can he manage that? Oh, here's Blackstone now. Maybe he'll tell you. And uh, maybe I won't. No, you'll, you'll have to watch the fishbowl trick and figure it out for yourself. It's a bargain, Blackstone, provided you tell us another of your adventures as a magic detective. And tell it right now. Very well. I'll tell you where the fishbowl came from, because that was an adventure in itself. Did you ever hear of Mrs. Van Laden? Did I? Why, she owns the famous Van Laden Emerald, one of the largest in the world. And she owned this fishbowl, too. Only Mrs. Van Laden gave me the fishbowl in return for the famous emerald. You mean you once owned the emerald, Blackstone? He means he saved it for Mrs. Van Laden, and she gave him the fishbowl as a souvenir. I was there, so I know all about it. And we'd like to hear all about it, Blackstone. Very well. Well, it began when I was invited to Mrs. Sylvester Van Laden's palatial home on Biscayne Bay between Miami and Miami Beach. Uh, Mr. Blackstone, it's such a pleasure to have you with us. Well, thank and you. Miss Wren, thank you. I've been all aflutter, Mr. Blackstone, waiting for you to arrive. Oh. Something very unexpected has occurred, something very serious. I must have your advice. I should be glad to give it, Mrs. Van Lee. It's about the famous emerald. You know, the magnificent gem that was a gift to my poor, lamented husband. I've heard about that celebrated emerald. Efforts have been made to steal it. Fortunately, my trusted servants frustrated the attempt. Uh, do you know who tried to steal it? One of the house guests, but which we do not know. Of course, I could not accuse all of them. No, of course not. Nor have I had the opportunity to place the emerald in safe deposit. I was afraid to wear it and afraid to leave it in my room. I can quite understand. So I struck upon a most ingenious expedient that I know will charm you. Uh, come with me to the music room. Certainly. My, what a huge fishbowl. And those goldfish are magnificent. Isn't the little castle artistic? Very. Those colored pebbles uh, add quite a sparkle. Why, yes, there are some red and some blue. And a uh, green one, Rhoda. Why, yes, I see the green one. Are you sure it's only a pebble, Rhoda? I knew you would understand, Mr. Blackstone. Don't you think I'm clever? Very clever, Mrs. Van Leeuwen. Why, it's the same as Emerald. That's right, Rhoda. Uh, tell me, Mrs. Van Leeuwen, was this all your own plan? Well, not entirely. I spoke about it to Topton. He's my butler, you know. You can trust Topton? Oh, absolutely. Why, he is a man who nearly caught the thief. Oh, I see. So you told Topton you were putting the emerald here in the fishbowl? Well, you see, I asked where I should put the emerald, and he said in the fishbowl. When I said that anyone might see it there, Topton said, well, all the better. I see. Uh, Mrs. Van Leeuwen, uh, I... I think you've set a very, very clever trap. <laughs> oh, thank you. But how is this a trap? It's very simple, Rhoda. If anyone reaches into the fishbowl, he'll get his hand wet, proving that he was after the emerald. Exactly what Topton said. Now, you said you uh, suspected one of your guests. Yes, his name is Monte Pelroy. Mm -hmm. He's lost a great deal of money gambling, I understand. Enough to risk stealing your emerald? I am afraid, yes. I have heard that Monte knows a great many doubtful people, but I learned it after I invited him here. Now, if I introduced you to Monte... I, uh, I think it would be better to introduce Rhoda to him, and don't tell Monte that she works with Blackstone, the magician. <laughs> so your name is Rhoda Brand. You may call me Rhoda if you wish. <laughs> Mine's Monte. Anyway, Rhoda, I like you. Oh, quite a compliment after so short an acquaintance. Well, I mean it for a genuine reason. Uh, different from most of the other guests. Oh, just how do you mean? Oh, most of them are snobs. They have money to waste and time to waste. Don't you ever waste both, Monty? Well, I have in the past. That's why I regret it. Look at the faces that you see here. Hmm? Do any of them appeal to you? 
Mm, why, yes. For instance, there's a very distinguished-looking gentleman talking to Mrs. Van Laden now. Oh, that's Blackstone the Magician. He's a special guest this evening. Oh. And I think I know why. You do? Yes. Mrs. Van Laden wants him to protect her precious emeralds. Somebody tried to steal it. Why, how terrible. And in my opinion, it was an inside job. Look over in that corner, Rhoda, near the fishbowl. Yes. You see that deaf, dapper man? Mm-hmm. Now, who is he? The butler. His name is Topton. He's watching that fishbowl. Do you know why? I couldn't guess. Because Mrs. Van Laden put her emerald in it, right among the pebbles, so as to fool people. I saw her do it. And does Topton know? I think so. I have a debt to square with that chap. What kind of a debt? A gambling debt. I oh, lost who? money playing cards with some friends of Mrs. Van Laden. Only they weren't. Worth what? Weren't her friends. They were crooked gamblers who had learned all about this place from Topton. That's how they posed as respectable people. You're sure Topton told them? Yes. Now listen, Rhoda. Let's take turns watching that fishbowl. We'll stroll over in that direction. All right. The light! Somebody turn them off! Mr. Blackstone, the other one! What happened? Oh, Keep out of that fishbowl, Topton! Where are you, Topton? Over here in the corner, madam. Here's up, Topton! Oh, so it's you, you speak. I have this. Find that light switch, Rhoda. Here's the light switch. I did my best, madam, to save the emerald. Did your best to steal it, you mean. And you succeeded. Ah, but my hands are dry and his are wet. That's because I was grabbing your hands. Go ahead, both of you. Let's see those hands. Yes, Topton's are dry. Monty's are wet. Then that clears me, sir. I would suggest that you search Monty Perroy. Well, I tell you, I had him, Topton. Why did you turn off those lights? Turn off the lights? Why, I... You were to the switch. In fact, Monty couldn't have turned them off. He was on the other side of the big bowl. That's right. I just turned on the light, so I know. But it, 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 it was to trap a thief. And trap a thief you did. I'm going to search you, Topton. Oh, no, you don't. Yes, sir. Uh... No, Topton has a gun. I have the gun now, Rhoda. And there's the emerald. In Topton's vest pocket. There's the thief, Mrs. Van Leeden. Your own butler, Topton. But how could Topton have stolen the emerald if his hands were dry? He was merely using an old trick. A trick to keep his hands dry? That's right. And Topton trapped Monty into grabbing for him so Monty's hands would get wet. It made Monty look so dumb that I knew he couldn't be a thief. Well, maybe I'm dumb, too, but this dry hand business has me baffled. Well, look there on the dressing table. Do you see that can of powder? Uh, you mean this one that says, uh, stearate of zinc? That's the one. Shake some of the powder on your hand. All right. There you are. Now rub the powder into your hand thoroughly, front and back. All right. Well, that's done. What next? Dip your hand into that big fish bowl and stir the water around. Now bring out your hand and look at it. Why, it's dry. <laughs> and so we stopped in hand. Up in his room, we found a can of steer able zinc. Still dry. Say, that's a good trick, Blackstone. And here is a little mystery that rivals the dry hand trick. Uh, we can all do it. All our listeners, right now. I need a saucer in the drinking glass. Any water in the drinking glass? Well, we'll make it about a uh, quarter full. All right, I'll bring them. And now I must borrow something else. A nickel. Do you always begin these tricks with borrowing a nickel? Well, I know, but suppose this time we make it a quarter. <laughs> oh, you, and uh, Here's a quarter before you make it a half dollar. What do I do next? Well, there's the saucer. Drop the coin in the saucer. There you go. Now, Rhoda, we'll pour the water from that glass into the saucer. All right. And now? Well, there you are. Pick up that quarter without getting your fingers wet. But you That's said... That's right. I said no stearate of zinc. We won't use any. In fact, anybody can pick up the coin without getting his fingers wet. You mean anybody that knows the trick? Yes, and since Rhoda doesn't know it, we'll give her a few moments to try it. Stone, how about the coin and the saucer? Well, it's still there. Rhoda hasn't figured it out yet. Well, now, wait a minute. The coin is in the saucer under a half an inch of water. That's right. And you're to pick up the coin without getting your fingers wet. Mm. Can't I pick up the saucer? No, you can't pick up the saucer. All right. Then I give up. And so do I. Let's see you do it, Blackstone. Unless it's impossible. No, it's very possible and very easy. 
Just take a little piece of paper and hold it over the empty glass. Over the empty glass? That's right. Now, strike a match. Apply it to the paper. Now, drop the paper right into the empty glass. There. That's easy. Now, as soon as the paper is burning well, pick up the glass and set it upside down in the saucer of water right beside the coin. All right. There you are. Oh! You saw what happened. Well, I'll say I did. Why, the glass sucked up all the water from the saucer. And there's the coin lying high and dry. Pick it up, Rhoda, without getting your fingers wet. I hope you all enjoyed that trick. And now, until next time, this is Blackstone saying good magic and goodbye. Join us next time when the world's greatest magician, Blackstone, tells us the story of the Maharaja's Gold and explains more tricks that you yourself can perform. Listen in again to Blackstone, the world's greatest magician. Right.